Hello, hello, Sam, Jonathan. Hello, so hello. great to chat with you today. Uh, thank you to everybody who's tuning in and watching this later in the future. Um, I'm really excited. So uh, I'm Bored, uh, also known as Bored Elon Musk on Twitter, co-founder of Boardbox, and we really love to to highlight. Uh, and focus on the best blockchain games on the market, those that are here today, those that are coming. Um, as soon as I spot as, as soon as I spotted Metalcore, I was immediately interested. I grew up loving mechs, not only playing video games with mechs, but also being really nerdy and building uh, plastic figurines of them, some of which have survived to my adulthood and are on my shelf. So um, there's a very, very large world that's being built out. Um, I wanted to take some time today to chat with with Sam and, and Jonathan, and I'm really excited to share that um, there's going to be some new game footage that hasn't been shared publicly thus far around Metalcore, uh, what everybody's appetites and keep folks, um, you know, uh, ex excited for what's what's to come. So first and foremost, um, would love for you guys to introduce yourself. So Sam, why don't you go first and Jonathan, you can follow up. Hey, board. Nice to uh, be here with you today. And that's uh, really cool to hear that the mechs and, uh, are such a big part of your childhood and that they've actually lasted through your, uh, until now. Like, <laughs> unfortunately, mine have not. Uh, I spent a lot of time collecting a lot of the old Macross, in particular, like the Robotech series and uh, as a kid, but none of them survived to today, unfortunately. They've kind of all disappeared or been destroyed. Um, but in any case... Super excited to be here. My name is Sam Kim. I'm the CEO of Infinite Games, which is the publisher of the game we're here to talk about, uh, Metalcore. I've uh, been in the blockchain space as a uh, building on Ethereum and other blockchains since 2017, and uh, started working on Metalcore a little shy of a year ago now, about 10 months ago, and um, excited to show this footage today. This is like actual in-game footage. This is not CGI, like this is the the, uh, the game that we'll be providing to players uh, in the coming months. And so excited to be here with you and to talk about Metalcore. Thanks, Sam. So I, I'll go next. Yeah, so um, my name is Jonathan Moses. I'm the executive producer on Metalcore uh, for Infinite Games. Um, I've been I've only been with the team now for, I think, three months now, relatively new. Um, I been in the game industry though for 25 years i got my start at activision uh did a tour at ea at atari disney um more recently at obsidian and at um, scopely i've worked on box products and free-to-play games and console and pc and um you know uh, conversations with sam and the team um got to hear what their plans were for bringing um, web3 tech into um serious games for, for for gamers and I got super excited about you know things that I've always wanted to do as a as a game maker and as a maker of games uh, and as a game player <laughs> um that uh, that this just sort of unlocks for player agency and I'm just super excited to be be part of this project well amazing and Sam I I believe that despite you losing uh you know some of your your, your mechs uh, in the past uh there, there perhaps will be some new metal core figurines on your shelf someday. I certainly hope you guys make something like that because I will definitely buy them. Uh, <laughs> um, and 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 Jonathan, uh, definitely uh, appreciate your your background in gaming. That's a really uh, you know wide roster of uh, of publishers that you've uh, that you've worked for, and I'm sure a lot of that will will uh, you know uh, be valuable as we as we see uh, metal core come to life. So you know just to kind of kick things off. Um, especially for those who maybe are less familiar with with Metalcore and the universe, universe you guys are building, like what are what are we looking at? What, what's the lore behind Metalcore? Where where are we located right now? And um, maybe you can break down just some of the types of vehicles that people uh, are, might be seeing in the footage over the next hour. Totally. So let me um, talk about the high level story, our, our, our lore. So the you know a, a a bunch of humans get together and decide that uh, life in our solar system isn't really um, uh, scalable anymore. They load up some colony ships, five of them, to uh, head for a for a distant star to start a better life on the planet Kerbos. Um, uh, with 500 years left to go in their journey, uh, one of the ships explodes um, in outer space under mysterious reasons. That explosion um, triggers uh, three of the other ships to open up their cryopods and um, 
releases all the all, all the colonists who thought that they'd be on a happy planet um, to figure out how to make life work on in this really stressful environment of a colony ship in the middle of outer space with no way to communicate with the other ships or or other people. Um, as such, over the over the generations, each ship uh, evolves their own um, way of governing themselves. You get the uh, the Holy Corp, the Gear Breakers, the Metal Punks, uh, with with uh, different styles in in governance and how they um, see the world. And um, and so when when the ships eventually make it to Kerbos and land, uh, rather than it being um, a whole bunch of uh, of people who were who set out to work together, you ended up with with uh, four different groups that are are not really ready to make peace, and they they immediately decide to that they need to um, to carve up the planet and claim the resources for their own, um, so that uh, their way of life could be the one that uh, dominates Kerbos. Um, so that's kind of where the, the game takes place. Um, there's the, the 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 metal punks, the gear breakers, and the holy corp. And then the the Earthers are kind of like that last ship that did stay in in, in um, cryo sleep for the whole journey, and that's where the player starts out as kind of a unaffiliated um, neutral party, and and you'll take missions from the different uh, factions, and you'll get bonuses by completing those missions, um, and eventually you'll want to uh, pledge yourself to one of those factions. But as you go, you get to just kind of decide um, what you want your own destiny to be um, in the game. Um, and uh, as you're building up your power, um, you see in the game right here, we've got the big giant, um, I'm going to say it wrong, but the Tom, Tom Bogiri um, mech with, uh, with with all of his legs. It's the big giant mech, and I think he's chasing, I think that's um, one of our Hellcats in front of him. But there's, so there, there's mechs. Um, you're able to get out of the mech and be an infantry guy. We've got um, uh, tanks, which are highly maneuverable on the battlefield, and then jets, which you get to... You know, death from above, and and um, get across the map very quickly, and so we've got this different kind of mixed arm combat, plus, um, and and each vehicle gives its own kind of player style. So you know, as, as again, as a as a person who's played games for for many years and 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 made games, um, Call of Duty has always been something that I've enjoyed, as um, the, the the PVE missions. But when I go into online, I'm just getting murdered by people who are have much better. Uh, reflexes than me and um the mech's game style works well for me because you you could take a bunch of hits and uh, and apply a lot of damage um but then the, the tank is great for being able to be fast and maneuverable or be an infantry guy and you know decide to um sneak into a base or snipe from a distance and so we we have all these different gameplay styles that will be um interacting together um in, in metalcore yeah I, I love that you said that because i mean honestly um i I get frustrated with first person shooters, like just core first person shooters, because I don't have really great twitch reflexes. I, I tend to like strategy. And so um, I never really heard anyone articulate the benefits of a mech style game the way you just did, um, which is that, yeah, you can take a bunch of hits, you can regroup, you can make decisions, and you can win the game um, without necessarily being like the sharpest shooter. So that's, that's amazing. And I, I love that perspective. Um, and I was curious, and this is kind of getting into the weeds with game design, but like, you know, wh when it comes to balancing, um, what does that process look like for anybody who maybe has never really, you know, been in the world of game design, like you're building all these different types of, of vehicles, um, and they have different specialties and powers, and obviously you have different kinds of players. Um, yeah. What does that look like when you kind of are trying to make sure that, you know, all the factions are, are sort of, you know, evenly, evenly matched and different players are able to compete and not just get obliterated by competition. Yeah. I mean, so it, it really comes down to a lot of play tests, a lot of feedback, um, you know, like you, we've designing each with its own kind of, um, specific role, um, and sort of going, going back a step, like, um, uh, we're, we're using a lot of different MMOs as kind of the, um, uh, gameplay models that we like, and and we do like, um, uh, like World of Tanks and a game I worked on, Armored Warfare, where you kind of had these like slower reload times and um, more strategic in your shooter. But at times that feels very frustrating to be just sort of like waiting for your cannon to reload so you can take a second hit. Um, and the the mix that we're able to get between the the the, the infantry and the tanks and the mechs, and so you can for whatever style you're into. Um, we're able to do and and in the gameplay balance um while we're we're doing play tests and getting feedback but it really comes down to that um you want each each class each each back to feel powerful in its own specific role like it, it doesn't have to be that 
you know, balance isn't by all things being equal. Like if, if a mech and an infantry meet face to face, like the, the mech's going to win. Uh, but, but there are certain cases where, uh, you know, assaulting a base, you really want to be in an infantry so that you can um, get in and, and capture a point. Or there's a, a you know, a, a, an enemy outpost that is better taken through stealth. Uh, versus a mech where you've got um, a, a land war and you need to take on um, a whole bunch of troops that um, there's there's no sneaking up on and uh, a mech will be your, your tool for that. Um, and so it's making sure that each that, that it isn't just that that all things are equal all the time, but that uh, you you've got that role and there's also balancing that you may be in a legendary mech um, where you're you're doing massive damage, but once that mech is is removed from the battlefield but because of it it's, it's taken too much damage or you've um you, you've drained the energy that it takes longer for it to respawn so that there's there's strategic choices in when i want to bring my more powerful um weapons to play versus you know being in the in the the, the quicker to reload um quicker to respawn um vehicles yeah makes sense and i have to imagine that at some point in the history of metalcore there will be an infantryman who is able to take down a mech. I don't know how they're going to do it, but they'll figure out a way, and it's going to be um, an awesome replay to watch just to figure out how the how that David versus Goliath moment happened. Um, yeah, we do absolutely have like so. If you look at the um, the the our, our upcoming infantryman, we've got a bunch of different classes within the infantry, and there is the super heavy, which is meant to go up against mechs. You know, again, like you won't want to go face to face necessarily, but. But you're going to have that firepower to be able to take out a mech um, with a little bit decreased speed, so you're at, at risk from other infantry being able to come up on your six um, if you're if you if you don't have a friend covering you. Um, so there there's that that mix, and and you will have uh, infantry classes where you know like your main role is as a medic or as an engineer to help support your team, so that you'll be able to bring those those squads to bear. Yeah, no, that's great. And and one thing that just came to mind just watching some of this footage. Um, is the different views. You've got kind of the classic, you know, first person shooter view. You've got the, the POV view. You've got like the, the, the third person behind the mech. You guys talked about other vehicles, uh, whether they're aerial or tanks. Um, so you're, you're using a lot of different interesting views. And I don't know, maybe I'm missing some, but um, how did you kind of think through, like, you know, from the player's perspective, toggling between these different, these different types of views of the game? I mean, there are definitely, like when traveling across the map, you know, being third person is more fun. Like you're able to um, appreciate the environment. So you're like what we're doing right here, um, being able to walk around the base. Um, and, and you're also able to, you know, maybe look around corners a little bit. But when you're really in the heat of combat, first person is absolutely the best view. You're able to, you know, line, to, line up the reticle and, and make sure that you're you're putting the right, um, the, 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 the right shot on your target. Um, and so it, it, it just felt more natural to have both the the third person and first person views, and and, and as a player, you're able to toggle those for when you want um, because it's cool. Yeah, I I mean it's definitely good to be able to see your awesome mech uh, versus just kind of being in the cockpit view. So agree with you there. Um, so kind of a philosophical question, and I'm hoping you guys both have a different answer. Um, but just thinking about this idea of fun in games, like a lot of people will will play games for different reasons and they will have fun for different reasons. Um, when I think about this type of a game, the most fun element for me is just kind of leveling up, right? It's like finding new components and and basically just building the the strongest possible you know vehicle um, that I can. Like that's that's the fun. It's kind of like I love the grinding and I love just um, seeing what the next cool thing you know, my character or my vehicle can accomplish. But I'm curious for you guys personally, and obviously you have much more of an inside look, but like if you put yourself in the in the perspective of a player, what do you think you're going to have the most fun doing? And and you can't you can't give me the uh, the easy answer of like, oh, there, there's so many different things. I love them all. I, I'm going to make you pick. Like, what is the most fun thing that you think you will have doing uh, in Metalcore? Well, you took my answer. Um, I, <laughs> so for, for myself, I mean, it is, it, it's the same as um, lots of games. It, it's that um, that feeling of working really hard, you know, leveling up and then feeling super powerful for a little bit. And then you get to missions where you're challenged again. And it's sort of like these little um, power increases in spurts where like, I, I am mighty, nothing can face me now. And then, you know, you, you, you feel like that for a little while until you get smacked around and then you have to go figure out how to you know, uh, level up or bring the right, um, the, the, the right equipment for the job. 
to feel powerful again. And it's that kind of like how puzzle, but you know, like that 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 mechanic where you're getting those kind of little um you know, those little hits of adrenaline where you 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 are powerful and mighty, but then like um and then you 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 face the new challenge and then you're powerful and mighty again is is, is what I like and what what keeps bringing me back to video games. Yeah, Sam, how about you? Yeah, I think for me, you know, like as the you know, not a person that doesn't have 25 years of game development experience. Um, you know, when I play with these guys, I'm pretty much always the worst player on the team. Um, <laughs> and so for me, it's like, you know, knowing what the mission is, being able to equip myself with the right vehicle, the right tools, and, and still being able to contribute meaningfully. You know, maybe it's only holding down one alley or lane for for this match or something like that, or having a very specific role, but it's fun. Like, like being able to play with my friends together and uh, achieving some sort of, like a mission or winning in a faction battle uh, and knowing that I had a meaningful impact because, you know, I'm aligned with these guys, but I did my task and my role. Um, I had the right equipment for that day. Um, I had the, you know, the right infantry or the right mech or the right vehicle like that. That to me, uh, it's fun, and so basically playing together, winning together, and uh, you know, getting rewarded together that way. I think that's what's going to be fun about this for me. Yeah. So for anyone who's a basketball fan, the analogy here is you're not necessarily Steph Curry, but you you passed the ball to him before he shot the three pointer. So um, and you and you and you appreciate that, and you have fun doing it. That's great. Yeah. Another <laughs> analogy in basketball would be like you know maybe my job is just to collect rebounds all day. Like don't worry yeah. about anything else, just rebound the damn ball. Uh, that's another probably you know get, and i've been classed with that in my youth too so sam get the rock kim is good for getting the ball and uh, in in metal core uh, a core contributor um uh, as well and jonathan i have to say um it's a bit embarrassing to admit this but that whole process of like leveling up and grinding away and building up your character um in my youth when i would play a lot of uh, rpgs especially you know you would kind of go off uh and battle various you know do various battles and just like level up your character and collect items. And then you would go and fight the next boss. I would always grind a little bit longer than I needed to, so that I would be even stronger than I had to be for a certain point of the game. And, uh, it always felt like cheating to me. Like, obviously it took work to, to get leveled up, but I always leveled up more than I had to. So I didn't experience that same, that same kind of feeling of like, Oh, this next boss is so, is so powerful because I was, I was a bit stronger than I had to be by, by that point in the game. But you still get the. I mean, like, I, so I was, um, you know, I, I was just playing uh, Horizon Forbidden West. I, I love that game, and mm -hmm. and all of the side quests and being able to go and and like overpower, you know, but but you just sort of uh, do all those side quests so that you're getting the stuff, and then when you come into the the fight, you feel smart for having made all of those choices to bring in the the, the better weapons, and and this is the same. Like, you know, you you will feel like you have. Um, it, uh, spent the, the right amount of time leveling up your your mechs, and your you know, you you have a couple of infantry to be able to choose from, and um, and so that way when you when your guild is going in for you know to to fight against somebody else, then uh, then then as Sam said, like you you feel like you've brought the right tools to the job, and and that is super rewarding. Thank you for justifying my my uh, guilty feelings. I appreciate that, and <laughs> I will take that into into metalcore in the future. Um, so. I wanted to switch gears a little bit and talk about the maps. Um, you know, earlier in the conversation, you talked about sort of the overall planet, the lore that led people or led led the characters to the place that they're at. Um, a lot of this game is spent, you know, in in battle, right? And so, um, just thinking about kind of the terrain and the maps and the physics, um, how how, did, how have you guys been kind of planning that out to? You know, basically make the maps like a character in the game. Like, how are they contributing to the to the battles that people will be participating in? Um, and also, just asking selfishly as a uh, as as a future player, um, how are you looking at sort of expanding? You know, kind of the the environments. You know, is, is the plan to introduce you know new maps over time, or you know, take existing maps and sort of modify them? Uh, what does what does that look like? So the, um... One of the fun things that we've had recently, and you're you're seeing this in the in the gameplay footage, is um, we'd spent uh, the, the team spent a bunch of months uh, with uh, play testing, kind of in 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 blockout form, where they've just you know laid out um, rough maps for 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 gameplay, and at the same time we had a a team of people who were doing concept art and and visual um, uh, you know deep dives into what the world of Kerbos would look like, and we ended up with 
you know, these these great paintings of these uh, like crystal fields and and mushrooms and, and and all these things that like what the different biomes on Kerbos would look like. And then over the last uh, about month and a half, um, adding the actually taking the, our block out maps and applying um, more shippable quality art to them. And that's what you're seeing in the video now. Um, and you know, adding the, the tweaking the time of daylighting and, and all of those things to be able to get the, the world looking great. And, um, and so that is the, 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 the layout, like setting up in environments that are, that are fun to play in and then make them look gorgeous. And the way the, the map is set up is so we've got these, um, I mean, the, the, uh, essentially they're hexes and, and um, each hex um, in, and if you think of the map in sort of like the, there's an outer ring of hexes, which will be relatively safer, largely for entirely for just PVE missions as players are, are, are um, growing in strength. As you are ready for more challenging missions, you'll move towards the center of the map where things get um, more and more real. You'll you'll have missions that are harder PVE and, and you'll be introduced to more PVP moments where there may be a, um, a player for another faction that you you're both given the same mission to capture a you know a um, a, a, a factory and and so there's uh, you know uh, PVE elements in there where you're you're fighting against bots but then there's also another player uh, trying to capture that point so you've 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 got that moment to places where even closer to the center of the map where it's it's just PVP all the time um, and so we're, we're setting this up so that that players as you're you're getting into it you you have kind of a safe space. Uh, to go and, and be, and then when you're ready to step it up, it's it's kind of a you know opt-in PVP where you're, you're you're deciding like yes, I'm ready to take on bigger challenges and 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 I feel ready for it. And and if you 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 get there and you find it a little bit punishing, you can take a little step back. And um, and as you say, like um, what we're focusing on is a couple of those core hexes as we get to our um, open world alpha uh, in just a couple of months. And um, and the team has a huge roadmap of additional environments we want to set up, additional maps, and so we will be adding hexes to our our map as we go, and the and, and players will see the world get bigger um, as we um, add more players and add add more biomes and add more mission types um, over well for for years and years, but but we have a a, a pretty deep roadmap for the next couple of months. Yeah, that that was one of my follow up questions about just the size and, and the scale. Um, you know, is the idea to basically you know increase increase the size of the hexes uh based on the player base and and i'm just curious you know even looking at what we're, we're, we're viewing right now just how how big this space is because it, it feels it feels really massive and you know if you're in a typical video game where you're on foot it's a lot of ground to cover uh i imagine these mechs are moving quite faster than a than a human would yeah you know and honestly i don't know what the equivalent in size of what we're looking at now is um but but it is something that um you know, we've we've talked about that we're we're going to be having an open world alpha. That as as we're um, selling our first round of NFTs, uh, players who, who who purchase will be able to be invited to our open world alpha, where we will be um, where players will get access to all of our vehicles and all of our playstyles as we're um, getting player feedback immediately to refine the game. And there is an ongoing discussion about like we we want the map to feel full of players and opportunities, but not so much so that like, um, you know, going back to, you know, experience playing World of Warcraft, where you've got the mission where you have to club a bunch of, you know, enemy uh, of uh, boars to get their hides to bring back for a mission. And, you know, early days, you like, you'd be standing on the hills with a whole bunch of other players waiting for those boars to spawn so you could quickly club them and, and claim their skin. Um, and we don't want that. Um, so yeah. it's finding the right mix and we're going to be using um, a lot of the feedback from players to kind of refine exactly how big the map is. Like we do know we want to get to places where we're going to have um, uh, large scale um, faction versus faction wars. And um, but what is the right mix for how big that is that you still that, that you're it's it's not a um, a meat grinder where just you, you, you spawn and die, but that there's room for you to get in and, and compete. But also that it isn't that like you spawn and have to travel 10 minutes to get to a part where you, where you die. Like there's there's that right mix. And we, we have a general idea of where we're headed, but um, we want to experiment a little bit with with real players and, and get that feedback. Yeah, no, it makes sense. And, and speaking of real players, um, will there be any other characters or vehicles that are, you know, essentially uh, AI <laughs> bots that are, you know, just kind of contributing to the 
to the to the live feel of of the environment um to you know certainly i guess help fill in for any lack of activity if that ever happens yeah, yeah. Well, so we, we there is um right now so um you'll be given a mission where you have to go clear out a, a enemy base and the enemy base is full of ai uh uh infantry and tanks and mechs and um in the build a couple weeks ago like they mess you up um <laughs> So, uh, so you know, there, there's also the, the the tuning to make sure that um, that that players are experiencing PVE missions that are at the right difficulty for for what they've got. But and again, that that feeling that you can always um, level up and then take on that mission and, and come back for it. Yeah, that makes sense. And so that that was kind of one example of like a, a side quest or or a mission that basically players can experience uh, in between battling each other. Um, any other sort of categories of of missions or side quests that you guys are envisioning that you can preview uh, i mean there's there, uh, there, there's a wide assortment between um you know uh, assaulting enemy bases and just killing everybody uh specific uh ai um npcs that need to be taken out um specific loot that it could be in multiple spaces that you have to go to um using a lot of uh you know uh, capture and hold various points where you'll have you know rather than you assaulting a base you're holding a base that's being assaulted by several waves of, of AI um, and potentially players as well. Um, so it, it, it's it's all that stuff. Yeah, love that, love that. In my head, I just had this idea of like some sort of uh, sports uh, sports leagues that, are, that get created where they're like racing each other and doing nonviolent competitions uh, using these <laughs> these mechs and, and, and planes. Uh, you know, one day a year, we're not gonna fight. We're just gonna, we're just gonna like, <laughs> You know, participate in in like mech polo or something. That's obviously not on not on brand or in your lore, but uh, that's that's me just riffing on things I would like to see. And you know, I've, I've certainly played in lots of games where you've got um, guilds that are doing things outside of the game to you know like ceasefires and coordination uh, against other guilds that they hate. Um, and I think that uh, our on our roadmap is to have those th um, opportunities within the game that you'll be able to. Uh, work out how you want to like um you know uh ygg may have several different um uh, baronies within the game that are, are working together and um uh, or or maybe they want to be competitive against each other like that that those tools and opportunities for um emergent gameplay is is, is awesome and we want to support all of that yeah, no, it makes sense and and i think that's a good segue just to talk about factions um you know you introduced some of the the initial lore um, that that kind of differentiates the various factions. Um, if you're if you're a player, uh, you know, entering the game for the first time, um, are you presented basically with like an opportunity to to join, you know, one of the one of the factions and one of the teams? And you know, what does that decision process look like? Um, how much, you know, and 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 also like how permanent is that? You know, once you're once you're part of a crew. Um, how easy is it to flip and why might a player, you know, want to do that versus, uh, you know, pick one and stick with it forever? You know, what, what are the pros and cons, I guess, of that? Yeah, so the um, the, I, the, the idea there is that uh, um, when you first start in, the players will uh, be given the opportunity to do sort of freelance missions for all the for for all of the factions to be able to build up your reputation and uh, sort of earn credit and, and also as you're going that you'll follow the story um of towards the later game you'll 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 want um the 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 missions will sort of drive you to pledge to a specific faction and the the barony system is also built around um dedicating yourself to a specific faction um and then uh you know we've talked about these sort of large uh faction wars where um there'll, there'll, there'll be a competition to see you know with, uh, basically to take over land and have your faction be more dominant in the in the map and the the at the conclusion of one of those uh, faction wars the faction that is winning will have more bonuses um within uh, within the game and so there'll be opportunities to um so so you you'll want to be you you want to be part of the faction that is winning and to be able to get those bonuses and and there will be sort of tiered out from uh, how players compete, or how, how how players contribute, and then um, within uh, and and to the winning faction, the sort of second place faction, um, and so there'll, there'll be opportunities within there. But um, but because the way the bonuses work, 
um, while you can flip, you'll you'll definitely be incentivized to um, to, to stick with, with with who you came with. Yeah. Okay. I got a. Oh, go ahead, Sam. I think, like, in addition to that, I think what will be interesting is just how the map plays out according to factions. Like, how are the how are the plots of land traded, bought, and sold in order to like strategically align factions? Do you want to be mixed in or do you want to be separated? Um, and then things like alliances and then breaking of alliances between factions and varying. I think that's going to be an interesting uh, interplay and see how that turns out within the game uh, when we have these like larger PvP faction battles. Yeah, I think it's so interesting balancing, um, you know, how much lore you guys, you know, created from the get go to establish like what a faction is about, and then basically what players do and how they contribute um, to what a faction becomes over time. Um, so, so curious to just kind of hear about how you guys are thinking about that, that balance, like how much, you know, how much is sort of controlled by the, by the game creators and, and developers and, and, and how much power is going to the individual factions to sort of, you know, shape what, uh, what, a what a particular faction looks like and what the story becomes over time. Oh man, that's such a good question. Um, so the, throwing the hard ones at you. I mean, the 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 factions themselves are largely you know lore based. Like you'll you'll um there'll be story and and um motivations behind what they're doing. But then the the player guilds within the game will form baronies and will help drive you know where um which faction holds the most amount of land based on uh, which faction your barony has pledged to. Um, so the the we we are definitely building in a lot of the lore, and then as players you know develop their own um, sort of the, like you know the, the the story and how the wars go and and how things go is, is sort of built into that as well. Um, and uh, but we are absolutely planning on having regular you know like that that it it won't be that um, you know the gear breakers are, are are just always dominant. Like we as game makers, we want to make sure that there's reason that. Um, that the, the game feels balanced and that there's reasons for for people to show up again even if they're you know they're they're the faction they pledge to is always losing um so we we will do rather um uh regular um resets and 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 um and make sure that we are balancing the uh the the the, the give, giving players a, a reason to um to to come back and 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 fight and know that they they have a chance um yeah, that makes sense, and that was kind of my follow-up question. But thinking about sort of like catch-up me mechanics at a, at like a macro level, if one faction gets really, really strong for whatever reason, uh, it, it feels like that's a good moment for a game to uh, lob some sort of environmental disaster that is going to, you know, kind of uh, even things up a little bit. Um, not to like take away from the the successes of of one, you know, one team that's that's doing quite well, but just to make the you know make sure the game is fun don't let anybody get too overpowered uh to the point where it's it's hard to sort of participate if you're not on that team yeah and i do want to i mean like so what you guys have seen in some of the um gameplay that's streaming is like we, we've got a time of day that shifts while you're playing and as part of that there's also a weather system so like mm -hmm. um in our play tests um there's like a, a meteor strike that like, you're, you're in the middle of um a, a pvp combat trying to take on a uh, capture a point that all of a sudden everybody has to scatter and get cut get to cover um uh, otherwise you'll you, you know the, the the mech that you were using to to dominate the point is all of a sudden uh, being pummeled by large rocks from outer space um and so you need to balance like you know holding the point now versus running away and coming back to to uh w w with your mech to take it later I do look forward to hearing the uh, the daily weather report for for uh, Kerbos, and uh, it's probably going to sound different than than what we're used to here. Um, it, it's a little bit of a backtrack question, but I, I forgot to ask. Just you know, in terms of kind of the the physics and the environment, it looks like movement is is pretty similar to what we would experience on Earth. But any any sort of weird um, natural or physical properties that are a bit different in in this universe? Uh, not really. I mean, I I, I think um, that. Um... To make the game immediately accessible to players, like you, you want um, gravity and, and physics to kind of work in a way that you expect. And and also, yeah, that, agreed. Things that I, I love about, you know, so we're we're, um, we're we're adding a whole lot of new mechanics to to the genre with with, with the Web three stuff, like the the NFTs and the tokens. But the core game is so immediately accessible to players. Like I I don't know of a genre that is more accessible than a first person shooter. Like it is. 
the 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 um absolute natural way of using WSAD to move around just because like generations of games have have just Im- embedded that into our our psyches and the idea of being able to like see an enemy and go like it's it's like tag you know mm-hmm. I'm I'm going to uh, tag you with bullets um but uh, you know it's it it is that there's a lot of rules to explain in how a first person shooter works and so we're able to take that core experience that is immediately accessible uh, to players and layer in that depth and uh, you know unlocking of NFTs and and the um, the agency that that gives to players to be able to build up um, th- you know their their own garage full of toys, but also then to be able to rent, sell, or um, um, you know share those with with people in their guilds. Or uh, the, the story I like to use is you know like my my son and I you know we play a ton of Call of Duty. Um, he's got more time than I do. I've got more money, and the ability with you know with with, with NFTs to be able to say like. You know, I've got this cool new toy. Um, maybe I spend some money for it, but but I need somebody to be able to spend time and um, level it up. And now, now I can um, easily give that to my son with him playing in his own account. He doesn't have to log in as me, and to be able to do that and um, share that and and do that similar thing with guilds where you've got people who are able to um, acquire you know the the, the sweet legendary mech, um, but then have players who are maybe better at actually playing it. Or have more time playing it, um, help level it up, and it, it's sort of mutually beneficial for everybody. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah no, I I love that perspective, and and you know, I definitely wanted to talk a little bit more about that. We we are talking about a game here that is this on chain. The assets are are ownable, and um, you know, I I think this is a I'll call it a sensitive subject with with people who who love video games, but just kind of that balance of like time versus skill versus monetary investment um it sounds like you know different players of different abilities and different <laughs> amounts of time available will have options right to, to to level up um but how are you thinking about just kind of keeping everyone happy both people who are maybe more familiar with blockchain games uh and those who are maybe more traditional gamers who are still trying to understand kind of the dynamic of of money being a bit more interwoven into the game itself i mean i so as a person who's made games and played games for a long time, um, when I first heard about NFTs, and, and um, I would say I was incredibly skeptical. Uh, I, I think that the um, and and the early games of the space have kind of borne that out as to um, why players are um, concerned about it. I mm-hmm. what we're doing in Metalcore is we we are building a kick-ass game that has NFTs in it, but um, but we want like there's no barrier to entry. Like players. Um, once we uh, w- once we open it up to worldwide, it will be free to play for everybody. Um, you won't need to hook up a wallet to be able to jump in. Um, you'll be able to uh, just through gameplay earn um, cool cool um, war machines to be able to use mechs and um, tanks and jets. Um, and and as you're playing and, and earning these cool things, and you'll you'll see that somebody else has a uh, you know maybe a slightly or, or maybe extremely cooler uh, mech than you. And like, how do I get one of those? And oh, that's it, it, I, I could buy that from this marketplace. And I'm going to. Um, and how do I do that? Oh, I hook up a wallet. Oh, that's super easy. Like, we're going to make it as straightforward as possible. Um, also, make it so that you know um, a, a, a thing you've minted in the game just by playing that um, somebody will be able to uh, you know offer to to buy it off of you. Like, hey, what does that even mean? Hey, that's kind of cool. And have these things that. Um, that because we're using blockchain, it just opens up player opportunity. And it isn't a thing that is we're, we're putting on players or you have to read a white paper and figure <laughs> out how to set up a wallet and then go back to, you know, go to these four other companies and then come back and then figure out how to play the game. And it's we, we want to make it as straightforward and easy. And, you know, I, I look at it a lot at how, you know, I'm, I'm old enough to remember when free to play games first started and there was a lot of. Growing yes, free, freeware, right? <laughs> and a lot of skepticism on, on how you know, like um, players were going to want to spend money for like the for loot boxes and all of that. And and there are certainly examples where some of that has not been to player um, uh, to the player's benefit. Um, but we are certainly doing our best to build a system that is going to have legs by supporting players and unlocking just great experiences for gameplay. And that all of the, you know, the, the the tokens and the NFT bits are are layered in there to give players um, really 
cool experiences and, and things that look like I, I I think that people after playing this will wonder why you know they ever played Call of Duty and and you know unlocked weapons that they were then you know stuck with on their own and not able to easily share with their friends. Oh yeah, no, I I mean I think about the thousands of dollars I've spent on games like Hearthstone and and Rocket League and others and you know the day that I stop playing those games uh, that's that's the end right I've invested a lot of my my time and, and money into those things and um, it feels like property that I never really owned right and and I think that's just kind of uh, the cultural shift that's going to hap- happen in the gaming community over time but what helps is you know, having a, an immediately easy to understand, fun to play game, which you guys are building. And so the rest will, will come. Um, yeah, I yeah. feel like the idea is that, you know, we're not going to beat them over the head with blockchain and wallet and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But like, let them play, you know, five, 10, however many hours and enjoy the game before, you know, we even introduce any concepts about blockchain or crypto. Like the Web3 native people are going to connect their wallet right away and start doing that stuff. But if you're a traditional gamer coming over, yeah, make sure you love the game. Make sure you play the game and you understand what it's about, be- and and provide the proper incentives for them to pick their, their interests, right? Like maybe they crafted an NFT, and you offer, you know, we can offer to buy it from them for a dollar. Maybe that picks their interest, and they say, "Let me see what this is all about," and learn, a, spend a little bit of time investigating about what a wallet is and how it's used, and how do you own? What does it mean to have ownership of your of your assets? Like, I, I think. You know, we don't need to rush into it. We can take our time mm-hmm. so long as they love the game. Yeah. So to that point, I was curious to hear from you guys um, what the experience might look like for two tiers of player. The first tier being sort of like, you know, maybe a more casual player spends a couple hours a week playing video games, and then a more advanced player who's per- perhaps participating in like tournaments and like you know competitive play in other games, and you know perhaps even winning you know winning prizes. Like what? What might Metalcore look like for both of those types of people, if that makes sense? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that for both those players, we want them to have a ton of fun. Um, I, I think that there's, um, you know, you can um, level up uh, by spending money and, and um, buying the the latest and greatest NFTs, or you can level up by spending a lot of time in the game and uh, completing missions and unlocking stuff that way. And by being in a uh, in a barony in a guild with with other players and having that mix where you've got people who are maybe investing more more money than time, and then you've got the players who are investing the time and have access to the equipment that players with the more money have been to help them further um, earn more rewards that then come back to the to the barony um, is that kind of dynamic um, cooperative uh, guild system that we that we're building this game for. No, that's amazing. I think for the casual players spending a couple of hours a week, like you may be a single player guy who just wants to play by yourself, or you may, may be more like me where you know you have a couple, two or three hours, you gather a few of your friends and you play some co-op missions together. Um, but largely you're playing kind of in that PvE type environment. I mean, you you may be engaging some skirmishes with other teams or other people, players, but... Uh, the faction wars are probably a smaller part of my experience and, uh, and and may engage them from time to time. But I'm probably spending the core of my time in those PvE single-player co-op version. Uh, whereas yeah. the, the heavy-duty guys, the guys who are putting money in, putting a lot of time and very invested into the game, um, and, and and I don't necessarily mean like just crypto people, just because, you know, gamers spend time, a lot of time, money, and energy in games too. Um, they might be kind of in the center of the map, uh, budding, te- you know, uh, what you call it, being neighbors with professional guilds like the YGGs of the world and engaging in like uh, territory battles against them for, you know, kind of some real stakes. And for us, it's not like you, you're playing for stakes in terms of NFTs. Uh, you're actually playing for kind of uh, the rewards that the land is actually yielding or generating uh, within the game. And so that, that's sort of how I see it playing out. Those are kind of two extremes, and obviously there are many ways to play it in the middle. Um, but at the extreme end, I think that's the way I, I kind of foresee it. Yeah, and, and I think a lot of players sort of in their natural cycle will start out as one and become the other and then maybe go back and forth. That um, You know, I think that there will be a lot of gamers from, or our, our hope is that there'll be a lot of 
players from sort of traditional games who who are going to come in like I, I wonder what this is and then they'll get to see that there's these the, the you know larger baronies with uh ygg's name on it or merit circle or or um you know and and, and like who what is that group and, and how are they able to do so much and and i think there's a great opportunity for you to start casual and um be able to play and have fun and then as you like i want to unlock more like what how can i get to that that deeper level and then get into the guild play and then maybe as you're playing in a guild you know like life happens and you have to um you're, you're you're not able to be as active and you then that's okay there'll still be a game there for you to play when when with the time you've got and then you again you um you know the project at work gets uh, ships and you, you have more time to play games again um i think that that's that that, that should all be natural and the game will support it yeah i, I definitely think i, I fall somewhere uh, around where, where sam's at um where i'm i'm kind of chicken I'm, I'm gonna play against the environment for a while and once in a while i'll step into the middle and probably die very quickly but that's okay it'll be a lot of fun and i can support people in in different ways um yeah it's just it's like it's like sports you know like you, you might be pretty good at like tennis or golf but then you you one day meet somebody who's like the worst professional and they're so much better than you you know and just uh but there's there's both both of these people can operate in the same world and can both enjoy the game and i appreciate that it's a, a sign of a yeah. good game designer yeah, I mean, we also want to make sure that the outer parts of the map where there's less, you know, territory, where the stakes and the uh, value of the land might be a little bit lower, like, that's where people like myself and you, you know, we can go out and do some faction battles as well. It just won't be for the same stakes as, you know, if you're a member of the, uh, one of the larger professional guilds. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Um, so I know we're, we're reaching the end of the hour. Um, I wanted to kind of close things out and hear a bit more about the, the open world um, early alpha. So you guys talked about it a little bit, but just kind of recapping um, how folks can participate in that, and then what they will expect to see um, over, you know, the next uh, or after the in the initial months of, of that release, and perhaps how they can provide feedback to you guys to help you as you refine the game as well. Uh, sure. So the um, the we we are. Uh, on July 26th, selling um, our first round of NFTs, our infantry, um, and after that will come the the the, the tanks and then the, the the jets and the mechs. Um, and players who who purchase those first NFTs will be invited into our open world alpha. Um, and we are using this as an opportunity to get a lot of community feedback. Like we, we we are going to be inviting um, our community into play to get feedback. Um, the the focus in our Early tests will be all about game balance. It will be about you know the things we talked about um, with mechs versus tanks and infantry to make sure that that all of them are fun and that we've got a good balance in our our PVE missions. Um, and and as we add more players and you know the, the PVP missions feel feel balanced and, and fun as well. Um, over over time, we'll add more of the um, sort of economy elements to it. But but those those um, the 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 early game we are because we need so much uh, player feedback. Uh, players won't be limited to just the NFTs they've purchased. We're going to be opening up uh, access to everybody who's in to have uh, uh, easy access to all of our mechs and, and all of the content that we have within the game. We'll also probably be accelerating sort of your in-game progression so that players can, again, uh, experience uh, further in on the game and make sure that we're getting as much feedback as possible. Um, we'll probably also do, during that time, do some data wipes and reset people and maybe um, set up special tests where we're equipping people with um, with just legendary stuff, you know, at the first specific test. So there'll be a lot of um, fun gameplay happening um, for the rest of probably 2022 and then early 2023. Our plan would be to open it up as a free-to-play game for, for the world. Yeah. So for those that aren't, you know, professional game developers or haven't been involved in it, uh, you know, they need to be aware that this is an early alpha version. There are going to be bugs. I mean, as you're watching this game footage, you're probably seeing you know, bugs here and there, uh, things that need to get addressed before the full release. Um, and so, you know, I would set expectations that there are going to be some challenges, some bugs, and those who have participated in Alphas before will know what that means. Um, you know, we'll, we'll probably start with some smaller scale play, like 5v5 type game action, along with the uh, PvE missions and then scale that up over time uh, through the end of the year, at which point, you know, we'll probably have enough data, enough um, uh, ability to balance the game. 
and you know, we'll over that course of time, we'll, we'll introduce free to play, uh, et cetera. And so, yeah, and as Jonathan mentioned, we want to give everybody the right the ac access to all of the vehicles uh, during the op open alpha. Obviously, when we do the full release, you'll be limited to whatever NFTs you actually hold. Uh, but in the alpha phase, like go out and try them all. Like have fun. Like this is what it's all about. We want to see how the craziest ways you guys use like our aircraft or you know mo some of the most creative or in in inventive ways to maneuver and use a tank. So yeah, it's uh, it's, oh, it's, it's fun. It's fun to try to figure out how to break a game. You know, it's uh, it's creativity yeah, exactly. and it also helps the designer. Yeah, and then early in the game, there'll be exactly. a lot. Of... <laughs> um, and, and, and just uh, the, you asked about yeah, how players can get feedback. Like, we're going to set up special spaces in our Discord so you can have uh, direct communication with the developers and sort of back and forth. Plus, we'll just be getting data uh, on the on the back end, you know, and how how um, what, what weapons were most successful, what vehicles were most successful in different encounters. Yeah, and you will have, as you know, uh, alpha participants, you will have real influence in the game so please do come join um and help us make this the best web 3 game it can possibly be i mean let's just make it the best game possible right like regardless of whether it's web 2 or web 3. uh and that's also you know one of the reasons we wanted to make this first ft drop accessible it's 50 dollars um you know and there'll be a ton of other benefits besides just having the nft and the early access but and so we wanted to make it accessible and get it uh as many like players as possible actually like real actual players uh, who are going to get in the game and play with us yeah no i i appreciate that approach um you know on the board box side we we secured 200 of them that we're going to be uh distributing it out to our our players uh for anyone who's watching and is not part of the board box community please you know encourage you to to join us um we're really proud to be uh partnering with you guys and helping with the initial uh mint of the infantrymen and certainly a lot of our our community is going to be participating in the alpha and giving you all very valuable feedback and uh trying to break your game in a in a polite way uh and participating in, in sort of the initial rounds and helping you know bring this game to life so um Thanks, thanks for you know for your partnership there, and we're excited to to participate. So you know, with that, I know we're we're coming to the end here. Um, wanted to give you both kind of a closing thought. Anything that you want to share with the community before we wrap up? Oh, uh, yeah. So I mean, I, you asked some fantastic questions. Um, I don't know that everything. I, I'm I'm hoping that um, everybody listening will be able to participate with us in our. Open World Alpha, we're super excited about the game and being able to share it with more people and get more feedback. Um, just, yeah, thank you very much for the time. Absolutely, thank you. Yeah, Sam, how about but, you? But as you, you know, you, know, you asked, like, like Jonathan said, you asked fantastic questions. Some of the most probing, if not the most probing questions uh, we've been asked so far. And so we're, we appreciate that. And I'll just say like, you know, to guys who are listening, thinking about participating in the NFT job, Please do join, like, and, and especially if you're like a, a serious gamer who's going to help us work with us. Uh, we need your feedback. Like we, you know, Jonathan, myself, and all the team, we have our design ideas and what we think we want to bring to market. But you know, at the end of the day, until we get your feedback, get the game into your hands, we, we never know for sure, right? And so this is a unique opportunity for you guys to help us make this the best game possible. And so I really do hope you, you know, hope that you guys join and be and participate in this. And um, yeah, I appreciate the partnership board. I mean, like it's one of the, uh, you know, arguably the best community out there for gamers. And so, you know, we really appreciate the partnership and you know, hope that this is the first of many steps that we're taking together in uh, advancing not just our game, but also all of Web3 Gaming. Yeah, uh, a rising tide lifts all ships, and um, you know we're 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 really excited to continue the conversation. Um, thank you guys for putting together this very long uh, gameplay footage uh, while we've been talking. I've been trying to balance uh, paying attention to to our conversation and also uh, watching for for hints and, and exploring all the visuals that are in front of me. So thank you, thank you for doing that. More to come, I'm sure. Uh, Sam, Kim, Jonathan, Moses, thank you so much for the conversation today. Um, everyone, please do check out. Metalcore, uh, join the Discord, uh, join the Boardbox Discord. Let's all stay in touch. Let's play together and uh, kill each other with mechs very soon. <laughs> Thanks, all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.